Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Chrissy and I am the owner of Sugar and Spice Glitter Co. In this channel, you can find all kinds of videos from resin tumblers, sublimation products, DIYs, reviews, and more. And today, I'm gonna to be showing you guys how you can create your own sublimation tumbler just in time for Mother's Day personalizing it with your own pictures now this one is one that i already created and posted on instagram and if you're not following me over there there will be links in the description down below so you can go ahead and check out all of the videos that i post every day in today's video we're going to be working on a fun sublimation tumbler and i'm going to show you guys how to create your own personalized sublimation tumbler just like this one using stock images in creative fabrica but also learning how to create your own inside of Canva. Now, before we get started, I wanna talk a little bit about Creative Fabrica because I have a really awesome deal for you guys. And it is a program that I've been using for so long and they have so many designs, fonts, and more that you guys can use for projects just like this one and more. Inside of Creative Fabrica, not only do you gain access to millions of designs and fonts, but you also have access to their amazing classes for makers just like me inside of Creative Fabrica. Right now, they have a really sweet deal where you can sign up for a free trial and be able to download up to 10 images and designs, fonts, whatever you want. You sign up for free download 10 of your most favorite designs fonts whatever after the 10th download or the first month your subscription then renews to nine dollars a month you guys nine dollars a month for millions of images and designs is absolutely insane and if you want to you can save even more by upgrading your plan to the yearly plan which comes out to $4.99 a month so for $59 for the entire year you can gain access to all the amazing designs inside of Creative Fabrica. I really really love and I think is an awesome feature is not only can you use the designs for personal use but you can also use these for commercial and full print on design access to all of these files. And if you're not happy with any of that stuff, don't worry, you can cancel anytime, no questions asked. If any of that sounds good to you, you can find a link in the description down below so that you can test out your free trial. But now that that's out of the way, let's dive into today's tutorial because I'm gonna show you guys not only how to download files and edit them in Canva just like this one, but also we're gonna learn how to create our very own from scratch inside of Canva. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing we have to do is go to our browser and type in creativefabrica.com. Once the browser opens up, you can see that there's an area where you can search. So we're just going to type in photo tumbler wrap. This is going to open up a search result with over a thousand digital images that you can choose from to be able to add custom photos. As you can see, not only do they have designs for moms and Mother's Day, but there are also designs for seniors that are graduating from high school. There are football mom tumblers. There are tumblers for dog mamas where you can add pictures of your animals. There's also tumbler designs for Father's Day and Father's Design tumblers. 4th of July, I mean, just look at all of the search results with over a thousand designs from you to choose from. There's literally everything available here. This is why I love having access to Creative Fabrica because if you need a design quick and easy, you can go straight there and there is absolutely something for you. You're gonna go through until you find a design you like. You're gonna go ahead and click on that. And once you've clicked on it, it's gonna give you the option to download. Once you hit that green download button, it's going to start downloading to your computer. You're going to get a file that's going to that you can open up. You're going to double click on that file. And usually there is an option for a straight tumbler or a taper tumbler. And since I always like to use straight tumblers, I just go ahead and download that one. I like to save my design under something that I know is easy to find. So I'm going to just change that to best mom wrap. And now we can go ahead back to our browser and we're going to head to canva.com. Once you're in Canva, you're going to click on the create a design button at the top right and you're going to scroll down to custom size. 
And the size that you want for a 20 ounce skinny is 9.3 by 8.2 and you can see that I've already have it there in my recent sizes. So I'm going to just click on that to open it up and we're going to upload a file. Now because I already have this file in my Canva, I'm going to skip that part but all you need to do is click that upload files button and it'll open up the folder in which you saved your design in. And I also already uploaded the pictures that I want from my phone so I'm going to go ahead and just insert that as well. I'm going to just quickly move all of those photos down to the side and I'm going to work one by one manually resizing each photo to the size of the frame that's on the design. Once I have the picture the same size of the frame, I'm going to click on the position button that's on the top menu and I'm going to move that picture all the way to the back. As you can see, the photo now looks like it's inside of a Polaroid, so I'm going to do the same thing to all of the photos that I have. Once I've sent all the photos to the back, I'm going to select the entire image and I'm going to make it so that it fits the entire size of my canvas. Once we've done that, we can go ahead and make a name for our file. At the top right, you can see where it says Untitled Design. I'm just going to go ahead and then type in the name of my design. So now that I've showed you guys how to edit a file that we downloaded from Creative Fabrica, I'm going to show you all how to create something similar straight from scratch. If you're like me and you like to DIY everything, or if you want something a little bit more custom designed, then this is going to help you out a ton. So we're gonna open up another blank canvas, the same size that we need for a 20 ounce, which is a 9.3 by 8.2. The left side menu, you're gonna see that there's an area that says elements, and that's where we're gonna get everything we need to create our design. I searched in glitter background until I found one that I liked. I'm going to add it to my canvas and stretch it out so it fits the entire sheet. Once I have the glitter background down, I'm going to start looking for my next element, which is a floral design. So I'm going to go ahead and type in floral and see what I can find. This part can be a little bit tedious if you're not really sure what you're looking for. So just keep that in mind that time is money. And if you're looking for a design already made, like I said earlier, Creative Fabrica is perfect for that. But I also wanted to share with you a way that you guys can DIY this yourself because I know I'm a DIYer and I love to have both options. So I'm looking up different phrases and I've changed it to floral border. I'm kind of looking around to see what I can use. But as you can see, there are many, many designs already available for Canva. Now Canva is free for you guys to sign up, but if you want access to other designs, there are some designs in there that are only available for subscription members and that is $10 a month. So once I found the floral design that I liked, I'm going to go ahead and reposition that so that it is on the border of my cup. Now these floral uh this floral banner here is where my tumbler wrap is going to meet so i'm putting them at the edge of my paper because that's where the seam is going to be so i'm just going ahead and repositioning that making sure it's even and then i'm going to look up in the element section a name for you know my font or whatever name you want so i typed in mama and a bunch of different graphics came up but i really liked the font and the look of this one so again i'm just turning it vertically and i'm resizing it to fit the sheet once i have that i'm going to start adding my photo frame so i'm going back to elements and i'm typing in photo frame and as you can see a bunch of different photo frames come up all these different sizes and shapes and a whole bunch of stuff but I'm going to go ahead and just click on that basic like Polaroid photo frame that I like and I'm going to reposition them until I'm happy with where they're located on the wrap. And once I'm happy with they're located, then we can go ahead and just upload those photos that we used from before. This 
part is really easy with the photo frame because as you can see once you have your photos already uploaded in canva all you have to do is just drag them and place them right above where that photo frame is and it would automatically just put it in the frame for you i really love that part because then you don't have to mess around with the options of resizing you literally just drag it over and it puts it in there for you now we have both of our wraps already made i'm just going to go ahead and change that mama font to white because i just thought it'd look a little bit better once you're happy with it you're going to save both of these designs to your computer as a PNG or PDF, whichever you like, and then you can open up and print it out on your computer. Now I'm going to open up both of these files. I'm going to show you guys how to press one of them after we're done printing it, but I use my printer, which is an Epson 8550, which I converted to sublimation. So I'm going to make sure that it is set to my Epson 8550. I'm going to make sure that my image is mirrored. It's on landscape. We have it on photo settings and we're going to go ahead and print that out so now we are back and we've printed out our image from inside of creative fabrica and of course i'm not going to leave you guys hanging i'm going to show you guys how i sublimate this on a sublimation tumbler now the tumbler i showed you guys in the beginning of this video which is this one right here let's see if i can get it to focus let me hide my head is actually on a matte finished tumbler. So today I'm gonna show you guys how to sublimate on a glossy tumbler. Been following me for a while on Instagram, then chances are you've already seen a quick video on me doing these because I've been doing sublimation tumblers for quite a while now. But I love the process and why would I show you guys how to design and not show you how to press? Plus, I really want to get this design on a tumbler just in time for Mother's Day. Now, the difference between your matte tumblers and your glossy tumblers, in my opinion, is that the image is going to be a lot more vibrant and high quality looking. But if you guys like the matte finish of your tumblers, which I happen to be a big fan of matte finish tumblers, uh, this is what it will look like. It's a very soft feeling like velvety finish and then this is your glossy so you got that high shine and do keep in mind that sublimation tumblers now in come in so many different finishes you can get glossy finished tumblers you can get matte finished tumblers you can get shimmery holographic finished um tumblers actual glitter um finished tumblers like it actually has a texture to it glow in the dark uv changing so many different kinds of tumblers now that you can sublimate on which really makes it a lot of fun because you can customize them not only for yourself but gifts for your family for your friends and if you're wanting to start a small business something to start your small business this is really easy to do guys let's just go ahead and jump right on in as you can see, I have my sheet right here and I'm gonna just take my scissor and I'm gonna start trimming the border. Trim off the entire top and bottom portion of my sheet. And because this is already pre-sized to 9.3 by 8.2, this is going to fit our tumbler exactly the size that we need. Now, a lot of people ask me why I trim the sides the way that I do. As you can see on the right side of the sheet, I trim it off completely. And on the left side, I leave a little bit of white space. The reason for this is it helps me get a really as close to perfect seam as I can get it. I use that white space of my sheet to kind of overlap the other and it also just helps me get that tape on there perfectly rather than trying to line up two um, sides together so once i have the sheet on perfectly i'm going to just grab my heat resistant tape i have this little tape dispenser that pre-cuts the little uh, tape pieces for me i'm going to just hold the sheet as taut as i can so that there aren't any spaces in between the paper and the tumbler you want to make sure you don't have any air getting in between there because that's what's going to cause your uh, images to not be as bright or maybe have some ghosting so I've put down all my short pieces I'm gonna grab one long piece of tape and I'm gonna place that vertically down the entire seam and I'm gonna make sure it is on nice and tight now I'm gonna take a few more long pieces and I'm going to wrap the entire bottom of my tumbler. And I don't do this all the time, but I decided to show you guys just in case you guys have any issues with the bottom of your seam not pressing 100%. I like to do this little trick just in case, but I've noticed that if you put your sheet on tight enough, um, you don't really need all these extra pieces of tape. But I wanted to just show you just in case you are having those issues, this really does help a lot. 
So now I've pulled out my heat press and I'm using the heat press from PNW Blanks and Sublimation. I'll have a link in the description down below so you can see which one I purchased. But if you're just getting started out, you may also want to check out Amazon and see which ones they have over there. They do have a lot of different sizes available and more affordable options, but I love my press and it was definitely a good investment for me. So I went ahead and I preheated my press to 385 and I'm going to go ahead and press my tumbler for 55 seconds. One of the main mistakes I used to make when I first started doing sublimation was that I was trying to force down the handle of my press. I used to have it on a lot of pressure. And when it comes to sublimation tumblers, you really don't need a lot of pressure at all. What gets the image onto your tumbler is the heat, not the pressure. So if you're getting lines in your images or if you feel like the paper is getting stuck to your tumbler, then it could be that your pressure is a little bit too high. So I just wanted to mention that because that was one of the biggest mistakes I made in the beginning you also want to make sure that you're heating the tumbler all the way around so after the 55 seconds is done i'm going to open up my press and i'm going to turn my tumbler around now i usually start with my tape facing facing down so i'm going to turn it with my tape facing up and i'm going to close it again and let that press for 55 seconds once that second 55 seconds is done, I'm going to go ahead and open my press and I'm going to turn my tumbler so that the tape is now facing to the side. And I'm going to do this two times. Now I'm going to close it and I'm going to let it start counting down, but I'm not going to do it a full 55 seconds. I'm going to end up doing it about 25 to 30 seconds and then I'll open it and turn it around again. So here you can see at about 30 seconds, I'm going to open up my press. I'm going to turn it so that the tape is facing now the other side and I'm going to close it again for another 20 to 25 seconds. This is another step that I like to do. Some people don't feel that it's necessary, but if you're having any issues again with the bottom of your seams ghosting or not pressing, I like to pull out my tumbler and I will close my press and let it um, heat up for like an additional 10 to 15 seconds on the bottom. I'm going to rotate it twice and then I'll turn the tumbler around and do the top as well. You can see I'm turning the tumbler around and we're going to go ahead and press the top of our tumbler for another 10 to 15 seconds. I like to do this twice as well and after I'm done doing it the second time, that's pretty much it. We're going to remove our tumbler from our press. I'm going to take a sharp exacto knife or a razor and I'm going to start removing all of that heat resistant tape. Now you may want to wait for your cup to cool down just a little bit because even though I am wearing heat resistant gloves, that tumbler is so hot that the heat does still get through the glove eventually. So take your time. You can let the cup cool down. I'm just kind of impatient. So I just go straight in to take it away, but I'm going to just use my little razor that I have here to remove those pieces of tape. A little trick I like to do is kind of just peek under the transfer just to make sure that the colors look nice and vibrant if i feel like the colors aren't as vibrant or maybe i underpressed it which i used to do a lot in the beginning i'll throw it back in my press just to heat it up again for another like 30 to 50 seconds depending on how much heat i think it needs but this one looks really great so i'm going to just go ahead and remove the rest of the tape and after i'm done removing all of that tape we'll reveal the tumbler so you can see what it looks like And here you have it guys, a perfect press. I love how it came out, so vibrant. The lines on the bottom of the seams are nice and crisp. No fading, no ghosting, none of that stuff. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget before you go to check out the description down below for everything that we spoke about in today's video. I will see you guys all next week. Until next time, love ya.